All right, welcome back to Flock of Socks, a podcast, episode 202. Today on the show, are all fast food workers created equal? We're going to tell you why they're not. Then, Kamala dropped a new accent, and it's her most egregious yet. And then in Cringe of the Week, a new fake hate crime just dropped, but was it actually a crime? You're going to be the judge. And last but not least, we have more proof that the Rust Belt is toast. You're not going to want to miss these clips. All this and more is Fleckus Talks, a podcast, episode 202, ranked the best new podcast of all time. Because words are just words until action actually starts. And actions speak louder than words. But at the same time, words speak louder than actions because sometimes it's the right thing to do. Very cool. Very cool. Plug the Stocks, the podcast featuring Richard the Rap All right, one for one on the intro, as always. Guys, life is precious, and everything we have can be taken away in just an instant. That's why I keep a four week emergency food kit on the ready in my house from my Patriot Supply. It's got everything my family could need during a crisis. With over 2,000 calories per day, there's enough to go around during times of social unrest, government crackdowns, or God forbid, an attack on the homeland. The food lasts 25 years and is ready whenever disaster strikes. We've seen mass panic in our lifetime, some not too long ago. I'm not gonna take my family's safety for granted anymore. Are you? Right now, you can save $50 on the four-week emergency food kits, the same ones I keep in my house. Go to preparewithlekas.com today and save $50 on the four-week emergency food kits and have them sent to you as fast as humanly possible. I know because when I got mine, it came in one day. And the shipping, as always, is free. Get your four-week emergency food kit now at preparewithlekas.com. That's preparewithlekas.com. It's linked in the description. Now let's get into housekeeping. All right. Thank you to My Patriot Supply for sponsoring. Thank you, My Patriot Supply. It's very important to get your My Patriot Supplies, especially if stuff goes south, which it probably will. (laughs) Episode 202. We made it. Yeah, we did. 202. Remember that band 303? Yeah, it's one letter off. One number off. And there's a color every energy. (laughs) No, that's the wrong song. That's the wrong (laughs) band. That's 311. 311. Yeah. What's uh, th- 303? Uh, I'm not going to do it. Black dress with the whites underneath. Yeah, you know yeah, what it I is. Know it. You I can't know make me sing to start the episode. I know 303. All right, guys, we have a great show today. Okay. We're not just saying that. Okay. Rap Boy and I were talking. St- the script is strong. The stories are strong. The clips are great. Yeah. Feels good. Let's get right into it. Okay. Can you read the first story? Earth is set to temporarily obtain another moon on September 29th. Huh. <laughs> what? <laughs> And you put this in here with no context, just like an Instagram style headline. It's probably some meteor or something that comes in briefly, does two orbits and bounces. Yeah. But, but you're what? You don't believe it? Or well, I do believe it. Okay. But I think like everyone's just going to go, oh, yeah, new moon temporarily. Oh, huh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you talking about? New moon. And then what? I don't know. Well, maybe it's aliens. Oh, all right. And then That's aliens right. could come to Earth. And I think I don't want to get too schizo too early. But if we do have fake aliens that come, they're, they're going to be fake because it's going to be Project Bluebeam style disclosure where the government's controlling it. And I think there's a world, if fake aliens were to come, where they come and endorse Kamala. Okay. Because right. they go, oh, there's too much hate on Earth and uh, you know Trump is hateful and it's time to unite. So keep an eye out. The temporary moon could be fake aliens. Okay. Thank you. Very you important. didn't want to start on two skits, so though, is what I heard. And then <laughs> yeah. temporary moon, fake aliens endorsing Kamala. Hey, temporary moon. I didn't say that. I know. You said But that. you didn't do any research either. But what the hell is a temporary moon? And they just put that out there like it's not the biggest story of all time. Temporary moon? Have you ever heard of anything like that? No. I haven't. All right, let's get into the show. Okay. We have a lot to get to. First I think, things first. I think they say the Earth had two moons at one point. There was a, two big chunks of the same moon. The moon impacted with the Earth. Four point five three billion years ago is the story, which I'm sure you're not really too into. Is the story? It collided, and then we had two, and then one of them spun off into the into the night. But uh, yeah, so maybe. Uh, but the <laughs> but the temporary moon. It's like what we don't. I don't know if stuff in space moves like that, where it comes and oh, it's a moon, and then it's gonna go on its way. All right, all right, all doesn't right. seem natural. Yeah. All right, we have important things to get to. 
First things first, the Hezbollah pagers and walkie-talkies blew up. Uh, it was a Mossad operation. Yeah, clean up. I got to give credit where it's due. Clean up. You don't agree? Well, you know, makes you wonder. Uh, can Mossad just blow us up whatever they want via our electronics? I think it was a specific thing that they supplemented or they supplied to Hezbollah, and then it exploded. Like, they put explosive on a battery, and then they heated it up. That's what I've been hearing. And so, unfortunately, here's a, here's a couple of pictures of some of these guys, and this guy looks familiar. Yeah, we lost a Fleckus type. Yeah. So, uh, I'm starting to not believe in your I'm Italian story, and uh, I'm leaning more towards Hezbollah member. Well, Italian- So, I understand why you're worried about them blowing up your phone now. Italian, Sicilian, North African. Yeah. North Africans and the Arabs kind of did their thing. Got greasy for a while there. Got a little greasy, and I'm sure I'm a part of that. Uh, but either way, can Mossad blow us up whenever they want via our electronics? Can't say yes or no, but my phone is not going to be behind my bed anymore on the table. For sure. Um, and it shouldn't be because it, it cooks us. Yeah. All right. Um, it's <laughs> always it's always interesting, though. Um, obviously, this is like a tactic of war and a little sneaky way to do it. And it's uh, got spread all over social media. And then I'm kind of like zooming out and looking at the picture. And it's like. People who are pro-Israel, right, obviously they like it more. Um, but then there's, like, women, like, women posting on Twitter, like, some guy getting blown up and, like, ha, 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 gotcha. Mm. And it's like, all right. We're losing our humanity te here. Te yeah, it's teetering on war crime. Obviously, it's it's fair game. There has law operatives, whatever. But then it's like, can you really kill just them? What if the guy's driving around with his kid in the car? I saw him in a grocery store and some guy's scampering away who was just getting uh, dates or something, <laughs> yeah. whatever they do in, in uh, Lebanon. But yeah, it, it, there's a weird thing where women, and I have a particular woman in mind who I know who like really gloats about it. And it's like, this guy got exploded. He's all, di he's permanently disfigured. You're posting about it on Twitter from a suburban Maryland or wherever you are house. It's a little weird. And obviously that's been a common theme with the Ukraine stuff. Uh, the drone footage of a guy looking up like this and giving up on his life while Ukraine drops a hand grenade on him. Like, very strange. Yeah, so, yeah. We're, That's we're a good point. Getting dehumanized a little bit. A little dehumanization for your Friday. Yeah. All right, let's get into the next part, maybe the most important part of the show. Kamala dropped a new accent. We've heard her do the black voice. Yeah, we've many heard, times We've now. heard her do Indian voice, kind of? No, no, I've never heard a true Indian. It's either like uh, HR white lady or HR black lady. And now we have a new one. Uh, she was speaking at a Hispanic convention, and here's what she did. What she did. Um, I love you back. <laughs> I love you back. Thought we weren't supposed to do that. Yeah, crazy. I can't imagine she's gonna what she's gonna do at like a Chinese convention or anything like that. Oh yeah. Next one. Oh, thank you. <laughs> she gets real into like <laughs> many bowing. moons. Many moons of good luck. Oh, you're the dragon. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, That's coming next. And then also a uh, big part when we were making fun of her tone switching. Black Twitter. Oh, yo, white people just figuring out tone switching. And now they're going to be like, oh, white people figuring out tone switching to a new language that you ain't even a part of. Yeah, double tone switching. <laughs> Checkmate, white people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, there's no explanation for it. Uh, sounds like Jennifer Lopez. Yeah, that was good. I yeah. love when she does that. Mm -hmm. Kamala off the cuff. That's where the magic is. Yeah, she's bound to step in it, right? Yeah. And then uh, now that we're fully getting into our politics section of housekeeping, uh, CNN did kind of like a man on the street uh, report where they were interviewing people at a restaurant. And listen to what they said about the Kamala supporters. Had like that. so much fun. But what was really incredible is in every single restaurant of the people willing to talk to us, we could only find one Harris supporter in mm. every restaurant. And we left no stone unturned. I approached every single huh. person. Ah, that's weird. And that was in Nevada. So you're in Nevada. The person that, you know, you're encouraging to win, Kamala Harris, uh, is supposed to get like 80 something million votes. Oh, yeah. In just a few days. And you can't find one person that likes her. But then when Trump goes to blue New York City, there's miles of people lined up on the street just to see the caravan of cars. Yeah. It's weird how that works. Um, which takes us to our next point. Speaking of the West, Arizona is a big uh, swing state that Trump needs to win. Yeah, both Nevada and Arizona. Up for grabs, for sure. Up for grabs. Very necessary. Uh, there was some voter, of, um, what was it, voter registration discrepancies. Can you read the tweet? Yeah, a massive error invalidating 
Uh, almost 100,000 voter registrations in the 2024 election just got discovered in Arizona. Democrat Secretary of State Adrian Fontes said the state accidentally marked 97,000 voters who did not provide proof of citizenship as having done so. In Arizona, voters who haven't provided proof of citizenship are allowed to vote, but only for federal offices. If you include this 97,000, the number of voters who haven't provided proof of citizenship in Arizona is now almost 150K. Wow. Yeah. So 150,000, oops, accidentally validated registered voters. Whoopsie. Oops. Oh, and how much How much is a swing state divided by or, or decided by? Five to 10,000? Oops. <laughs> oops. And then sure, it, that. <laughs> sure it goes all in one direction as it always does. Yeah. Uh, but it also is a Democrat secretary of state. Mm -hmm. So that could maybe be like 150,000 Trump supporters that are now going to not be registered to vote. Or it could be them just trying to close the gap. Right now in Arizona, there's 250,000 more Republicans registered to vote than there are Democrats. Yeah. So I'm sure that 150K was trying to close that gap a little bit. Yeah. And uh, it's like playing Monopoly and it's chance and you're a Republican and the error is never in your favor. Yeah. That's kind of the vibe I'm getting, right? Yeah. They're working on it. Yeah. They're working on closing that gap. Um, and obviously, with this election, policy is very important, at least for our side, foreign relations as well. Um, and then there was a thing on MSNBC when they were talking about how Kamala will do foreign relation-wise and dealing with dictators. And listen to what they said. But Kamala Harris would be just the opposite. Why? Because she's an inspiration. Not only is she mm. positive, does she bring hope and optimism, but as a black woman, uh, the, the product of a mixed marriage... She will inspire millions of people throughout the world. Our credibility as a nation, you know, th that we would be able to allow, our country is so great that we're allowed a woman like that to become the ch commander in chief, the president of the United States. That is going to send a powerful message all over the world. People like Vladimir Putin are going to say, hey, wait a minute. These guys, you know, they truly have a democratic country. They truly are representative. They truly are fighting for all their people. And Kamala Harris is a manifestation of that. Wow, yeah. Vladimir Putin's really going to respect us now because Kamala's married to Doug Emhoff. Yeah. <laughs> and she had a black father and an Indian mother. Yeah. Vladimir Putin salutes, right? Exactly. Um, and then obviously China and Putin are going to laugh when they hear that. Yeah. Um, but it just shows that the Democrats think the whole world thinks like they do. Yeah, Which absolutely. is like the big takeaway where like, well, she's a person of color and... She has this weird family and her daughter's pans or whatever, yeah. as if that's going to like help with anything. God damn it. I got to respect that. You know? <laughs> that. That's the energy. All right. Ukraine can have Ukraine back. You know what? Give it back. <laughs> she has an Indian uh, mother. And Putin, <laughs> Putin famously, like in that whole Tucker interview, the entire context of his uh, thought process and how he thinks, which this guy uh, apparently skipped was that the foreign policy of the U.S. is consistent beyond presidents. It doesn't matter who's sitting in the chair, the CIA, the deep state, whatever his version of calling it was, does the same thing regardless. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who's in the chair. And obviously, it really doesn't matter when Joe Biden's in the chair. That's like a brainless guy, just uh, the ship still moves without him, right? So uh, retarded point, even if you're not being a leftist, right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so obviously the Democrats need to lie and cheat big time coming mm -hmm. into the election. Um, and the democracy is on the ballot is kind of like their main point. Like, oh, we have to vote for Kamala. Otherwise, we're going to lose our democracy. And Scott Adams had a tweet. It's a little long, but Richard Rapoy is a great reader. Can you give it a read? Yeah, he says, Trump is trying to steal your democracy by running for office. Meanwhile, Democrats are importing millions of fake asylum seekers to political battleground states to create one party Democrat rule, pack the Supreme Court to remove it as a separate branch of government, remove the filibuster to neuter the minority party, censor and jail dissenters as misinformation, control the entire news industry to keep the public uninformed via a mesh network of hoaxes from fine people hoax to the January 6th insurrection hoax, bankrupt and jail independent political voices maintain a voting system that cannot be fully audited by design, fake pollsters support any suspicious vote outcomes, take away your most useful firearms, weaponize assassins of political opponents via media messaging. Yeah. 
So yeah, that's on the ballot too. <laughs> yeah, democracy is on the ballot, but then also all those other things, right? Yeah. So democracy actually is on the ballot. I know. But the side that's it's saying backwards. that is fully backwards. Yeah. And that's like a rules for radicals thing. Accuse them of what you're doing. 100%. So people would hear that and they go, oh, democracy is on the ballot. I have to vote for Kamala. Actually, I'll look into it. Even it, like you would never assume that democracy is on the ballot, but <laughs> it's Kamala that doesn't follow that and it's Trump who you need to vote for. For sure. So it keeps people off of that realization because you wouldn't think, well, maybe it's close. Trump's yeah. not good for democracy. Maybe it's not. It's actually the full opposite. Um, and Trump has a great policy that just dropped. Um, he's going to, well, we'll let him say it for himself. And while working Americans catch up, we're going to put a temporary cap on credit card interest rates. We're going to cap it at around 10%. We can't let them make 25 and 30%. That's a great policy. Yeah, that one is all right. I like that one. Obviously, some credit cards are predatory. People get into a slippery, slippery slope. Um, and, you know, debt, usury, mm -hmm. I'm against it for the most part. Uh, but one of his other policies, which I think is even better, is his plan to not tax overtime pay. Yeah. And we were talking about that. He announced that at an Arizona rally. And I just think something like that is such a precise and targeted thing where it's like, you have to already have a job. You have to be working more, like obviously a hard worker to do overtime and like taking more hours. And then you're, if you're working overtime, you're the type of person who has been infect, uh, affected by inflation a lot. And so I love that policy. No tax on tips. That's like a certain working class, uh, you know, waiters and waitresses and people who have obviously been affected by inflation and housing costs and all that. But I just think that's such a nice targeted uh, precision airstrike on taxes. Yeah. You know, Working class people, that's who that applies to. There's people who want the free handouts and the government uh, subsidies. That's who's going to vote Democrat mm -hmm. for people who take pride in their work and work hard and want to work more and make more money and provide for their families. That's like the middle class vote that's so important this election. Yeah. Uh, and then CNN was trying to get some middle class voters uh, perspectives on the upcoming election. And they went to like a boat, a Trump boat rally. And look what they said. What's your most important issue? The economy, getting the interest rates down, getting it to where we can afford to live in America. Right now, it's it's too expensive. OK, now let me maybe ask like a slightly impolite question. But, you know, if you can afford a boat, you're not hurting so bad, right? Because a boat costs a lot of money and it's a lot of upkeep. Listen, nobody gave me shit. I earned everything that I've got. I'm retired military, retired power plant, and I am successful and retired and with boats, jet skis, because I did it right. And everybody has that chance. Whether they choose or not, that's up to them. I would never try to take anything away from you in that way. But what I'm asking is, groceries are a, probably a smaller part of your budget than, say, you know, someone who's like a little worse off. I think it's interesting that people who are a little bit more comfortable are still so concerned about the economy. Did you see what I'm because saying? Because I want my money to go further. I want inflation to go down. I want interest rates to go back down. I want all that. But it, that that covers everybody in the economy. Hmm. So yeah. maybe this guy's racist, like yeah. all the middle to upper class white people who only got rich because they oppressed black people or something. Yeah. And this guy, well, what do you think this guy is? 50, 55? Yeah. Retired uh, military power plant, he said. It's like if you're 55 and you can't afford a $30,000 pontoon boat. Yeah, I don't know. You, you could have mismanaged something or maybe you just didn't have the right job, right? Like. To say that to like a older retired guy is a little disrespectful. Like th we're not talking about a uh, Jeff Bezos mega yacht here. We're yeah. talking about like a pontoon on your local lake and a fifteen hundred dollar jet ski he bought off Facebook Marketplace. Yeah, so and that's, that's not supposed to exist in the economy. That's too good. That's what I'm saying. And that's such an average middle class Midwest, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, like all those states that have lakes and uh, boating. And I don't know where this guy is at, but. The point is, like, that's a very attainable goal if you put your head down and kind of make, like, a few smart decisions. Mm -hmm. It's uh, – and especially with age, right? Yeah. Um, like that, people that guy's age back in the day 
could be like a teacher or a mailman and then have like a lake house. Yeah, for sure. You know, like that's so out of the question now because of how bad things have gotten. And he's also thinking about everybody else too, though all those things help every single person in the economy. Uh, but she asks him like, is it selfish because gro you, groceries is less of a percent of your income? And it's like, it, they love boiling it down to groceries. And it's like, yeah, groceries, insurance, uh, rent, insu home insurance, like my like kids' braces. Every single thing. Private school. Yeah, like. every single thing was affected by inflation. And so um, obviously this guy is a very rational, normal person, and CNN didn't really know how to handle it. Yeah, he and, cooked him. So, yeah, it's a weird girl, too. She kind of like, what a what a weird style of interviewing. Like, I don't want to be rude, but you have a boat, so fuck everyone, right? Yeah. So. Producers are probably in her ear like, no, no. No, don't off, do it. Off. Um, all right, moving on. We have some new uh, info about the guy who tried to assassinate Trump from the bushes at the golf course. Uh, so they interviewed his neighbor, and this is what the person had to say about him. When you were at the house inside, did you see anything political or anything like that? No, only thing I seen, they had a horse in the house. I mean, a whole live horse in the house. But like, <laughs> like I said, the guns and stuff and all, I mean, but yeah, they were, oh, I mean, kind of weird, you know, but... You know, they didn't bother me. I didn't bother them, like I said. How do you mean a horse in the house? Interesting. Horse, a horse. Horse, kind of weird. horse in the house. Yeah, what's that about? A <laughs> full horse in the house. That's very weird. I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. The guy had a horse in the house. Okay, interesting. Uh, <laughs> we may never know what his motivations were, but he had a horse in the house. And uh, he's not been charged with trying to actually assassinate Trump yet, just those gun charges, as yeah. you remember. And then uh, earlier in the week, there was a story about a potential bomb at the rally in New York yeah. that got debunked. Mm -hmm. Like, it wasn't exactly that. It was someone who was doing training, which is weird in itself. Very like, sketchy story. Yeah, know. it's like a Fed setup type thing. Uh, but I wanted to make a, a point out a difference between the right and the left. Like as soon as we found out on the right that it wasn't actually a bomb planted at the event, everyone on the right was like, guys, it's not true. Deleted their posts, updated the post. Hey, this isn't true. Ended up being a training scenario, whatever. Yeah. Everyone like immediately jumped after it. But when the Democrats have something like that, they and they find out something that they promoted and said was true is not true. They just go, oh. That was six months ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, Jesse Smollett attack was fake. Wow. You, you still but, talking about that? Yeah. Stuff like that does happen all the time, though. Yeah. Like, they completely don't do it the same way we do it. I just wanted to point out that big difference. Very true. All right. Moving on. Uh, one former CNN host is trying to act normal lately. Uh, it's Chris Cuomo. Listen to what he said. I don't get it. That's why I reached out to Trump. I wanted to just say, listen, I'm really sorry that this is going on and it's being dealt with this way. Not because I'm in favor of his politics or what he says. I criticize him all the time. That's my job. And he deserves it. But he doesn't deserve this. A guy pointing an AK-47 at him while he's playing golf? And we take solace in the fact that the guy didn't get any rounds off. If I had been through what that guy's been through in the last two months, you would not know where I am. You would never see me on TV again. Wow. Yeah. So now that he's off of CNN, he has to, like, stop doing the lefty lunatic shit, mm. I'm assuming. And he has to attract actual viewers, not just be played with no sound in an airport like CNN does. Yeah, collecting all... a check and, <laughs> yeah. just, and then just saying whatever needs to be said for COVID or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. And then this kind of uh, tells me where the, like, the sentiment's at. You know you see some polls, and some polls will be like, oh, Kamala's neck and neck with Trump. It's so close. The real poll is the sentiment of people who left CNN and what they view Trump as now. And it's like him doing that kind of tells me that he thinks Trump's going to win and he's going to need to attract an audience and be relevant in a couple months from now. Kind of where my head goes. Yeah. Um, reasonable. Yeah, it's reasonable, which takes us to our migrant section. Okay. Before we get there, make sure you guys use this opportunity to help us juice the algo, tickle the post, leave a like, leave a comment, leave a comment again, then start yapping. Notifications need to be on. P.O. Box needs to be full. And old episodes need to be watched. Rob's cabana needs to be paid for. Someone has to pay for it. <laughs> All right. First things first of our migrant section. Can you read this headline? Yeah, this is uh, old, but it says 158 Dems vote against bill to deport illegal immigrants who commit sex crimes. 
That's interesting. Yeah. That's weird. I guess they need the people here so they can vote and lower, no the, what. lower the trust of society. Yeah. They want a little, it's a twofer. It's anarchy plus voting bodies. Um, and, you know, it's just, wh what on earth would be the reason to block this? Mm, makes you wonder. Yeah. Makes you wonder who we're up against and what their motivations are. And just how evil they might be. Yeah. So let's check in on the Rust Belt, the yeah. heart of America. Yeah. America's heartland. Bread basket. Yeah, like the most important people, the working class Americans. And let's we're going to go kind of fast through them. We're going to check in on Dearborn, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and Whitewater, Wisconsin. Here's a clip from Dearborn. That doesn't look good. Uh, all right. So that's Michigan. Yeah, those, those are some pager users. Yeah. I would see. Those are some fleckus countrymen. Yeah. And then we're going to check in in Pennsylvania where kids are back at school. And there's also some Haitians that are back at school as well. Yeah. This is uh, Charleroi, Pennsylvania, which is an up and coming dumping ground for more Haitians. And let's hear some of the testimony about how school is going from there. I think they are trying to get even interpreters to teach the kids, mm. let alone get to this part. Yeah, they're having a huge problem, I think. It's kind of ridiculous. With trying to teach. There were 45 Haitians that started kindergarten this year. Whoa. 45. How big is kindergarten well, overall? A, a kindergarten class is probably no more than 60 at most. At most. Yeah, like one classroom is probably like a, a 30, tw yeah. 20 kids, I'm 20, thinking. 20, maybe 30, 25. Yeah. Wow. I don't know. So yeah. like the majority of the kindergarten yeah. is Haitian yeah, now. Yeah. In what, two years or something like that? Like yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. A lot of Haitians. I wonder how kids can learn in school if no one speaks English. I would guess that uh, instead of rising all tides and the, the leftists would try to tell you, oh, it's multicultural. They learn two languages. But instead, everybody just drops down to like the most basic shitty English you can. And then nobody learns Creole. Mm -hmm. And then the Creole, the Haitians don't learn English as well. Um and it's just a low and co lowest common denominator situation, right? Yeah. And that's Charleroi, Pennsylvania. Mm. Wonder who they voted for, right? Yeah, big time. And it says uh, there was 4,000 Americans and 2,000 Haitians in the school. So that's one of the smallest towns that, we've, uh, that we're going to say. Obviously, Springfield was like 59K and got 20K. This is 4K, got 2K Haitians. Mm. It's a 50% increase, and yeah. they don't speak any English. Mm -hmm. uh, then Whitewater, Wisconsin is another example. Um, there's a news story out of there. Can you let that rip? Migrants first started arriving in early 2022. The traffic has picked up. On December 28th, Whitewater's police chief and city manager wrote a letter to the White House. They're asking the Biden administration for help as this city of about 15,000 handles an estimated 800 to 1,000 migrants. I'm not going to lie, we did close for two weeks at one point just to sort of reassess how we were serving the needs of everybody. Christine Zabios, director of the community space, says there was not a huge increase in visitors, but they were seeing a lot of people with no idea how the space works. Sometimes we felt that we had people who were maybe taking more than they needed just because they didn't know they could come back. For the city, the strain was more severe. The letter states police are struggling to watch the entire community because they're seeing three times the number of unlicensed drivers. Then, the city says it bought, quote, costly translation software so police could communicate with migrants when handling traffic cases up to more serious cases, including sexual assaults and the death of an infant. We have a broken legal immigration system. We have a broken illegal immigration system. The illegal immigration system has gotten so bad that we have to solve that first. Congressman Brian Stile is among more than 60 House Republicans trying to make that point by visiting the southern border. Hmm. So there's a lot going on there, right? These are actually Venezuelans being dumped in white water. It's a thousand of them so far since mid-2022. Uh, town is about 14,000 people. But the same issues happen everywhere. Costly inability to communicate translator services, right? Whether that's in school or police in this case. Um, people who are obviously straining the welfare system. They're, the woman who spoke at the beginning of that video worked at a food bank, basically, with clothes. People took too much, didn't know they could come back. And then uh, driving without a license and just kind of general crime, like free-for-all shit, right? Mm -hmm. And that happens everywhere. And all those locations we just showed you are just Rust Belt. Dearborn, obviously, has been going on for a long, the longest time. 
And uh, that's what it's going to look like where all these Haitians are. But uh, the the most infuriating part of this is like they write a letter to the White House about it. And then uh, the state reps are going to get together and go visit the border and see why this is happening. Ah, they keep letting them in. Oh, yeah. No one stops them. Oh, the Border Patrol, they're actually helping them. They're, ah, they're, they're collecting. that. Yeah. <laughs> Got them. They're, they're, exactly. There's no point in that. It's like writing a letter to the White House and they go, oh, yeah, the, exactly what we thought we were doing is happening. Okay. They crumple it up and they basketball shoot it into a trash can, mm-hmm. right? So that's what they're doing to the Midwest. That's why uh, democracy is on the ballot mm. in this election. Because uh, once they stuff a certain amount of people in and the anchor babies really drop, uh, we might not be able to salvage anything. Yeah, right? once these people start voting, it's going to get uh, very democratic. Yeah. Um, and then you're kind of wondering, I'm sure, why we have so many of these people from like these really bad countries. And there was actually a tweet that sums it up that compares uh, Trump and even Obama's last term when it comes to inadmissible aliens. Yeah. So this is the graph here in the background. You can see Obama didn't have many. Trump had, like, not a ton at all. And then all of a sudden, the Biden-Harris team uh, lets in all these people from Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Haiti. And Venezuela and Haiti are the ones causing the most problems. I haven't heard too many uh, bad, horrible stories out of Nicaragua yet, but you got to assume they're they're in some small town that hasn't been brought into the national media attention yet. Yeah, I'm sure we'll get there soon. Um, but so this tweet says, remember when Congress changed the statutory definition of inadmissible to mean illegal aliens we fly into the interior of the country? Uh, you're telling me Congress never passed a law authorizing that and Biden-Harris didn't even campaign on doing it? And that's the point. Like the, Those are the temporary protective status that's being offered. People are able to check in on an app and flown into the interior of the country. That's basically what all the Haitians are. You see a lot of leftists talking about how they're here legally on some magic wand that Kamala waved and Joe Biden waved saying, oh, well, they're temporarily protected. They have an app. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, we don't really view that as legal or anything. Um, You kind of skirted the rules. And no one told us about this until they already got here. And then they said, oh, they did it right. There's an app. And they 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 went through a process. Exactly. But if they had said, we're going to do this, everyone would go, oh, I don't want that. Yeah. That's why it's so nefarious. Nobody ever voted for this. Nobody explicitly campaigned on this. That's something we've said for basically all Western countries, England, uh, France, the UK, Norway, Sweden, those countries that uh, really got smoked from Middle Eastern migrants, like nobody campaigned, nobody even said it until it was happening. And then when you oppose it, then they say you're racist or something because they're here legally because someone waved a magic wand and said 20,000 Haitians in Springfield, please. Mm -hmm. Um, Graphs don't lie, though. So it's so infuriating. Yeah. All right. Our last clip of our migrant section is some... Newcomers who discovered charity bins where people can donate like clothes and sneakers and stuff. Uh, and here's how they react to it. It's a free for all. It's like being in a candy store. Yeah, it looks like they're shopping right out of them. Yeah. We need these people here to help the economy or whatever. Yeah. Though. So that's what happens. Any like feel good thing, anything you have set up in society that's like a resource for people actually down and out in their luck, that just gets taken over and it becomes a free grocery store, a free clothing store in this case. Dial down the social trust, dial up the crime, and welcome to America. Here's your EBT card, right? Yep, exactly. Which takes us to my favorite part of the show. Uh, This is where we talk about whatever I want. It's the final page of housekeeping. Okay. Uh, First things first, we have a couple offenses, one from a Republican and one from a Democrat. First is the Megyn Kelly clip. You, you bring other facts to bear in the debate that are being ignored. And that's what he was saying. And I loved, I think it was in, in that interview where Dana Bash says, you know, the police have gone through 11 months of recordings of calls and they've only found two Springfield residents calling to complain about Haitian nigger, uh, migrants taking. Huh. That's interesting. What was that? Rich, you're not supposed to say that. That's mm. supposed to be what you say in your house by yourself. Yeah. Everybody slips up, though, Rich. No big deal. Don't beat yourself up <laughs> yeah, over it. No like, big no deal. big deal at all. Don't worry about it, man. There's some stuff you say on camera, and there's some stuff you say in the privacy of your own home. At least you caught yourself. That's not a big deal, okay? No big deal. All right, next. This lady, she's a Democrat. Having Trump not only have had the codes, but now having the classified information for Americans and being able to put that out and share it in his resort with anyone and everyone who comes through 
should be terrifying to all Americans, mm -hmm. and he needs to be shot, stopped. Ah, you know, those penalties offset replay the down. Replay first down. <laughs> Offsetting penalties, even though Rich Lowry, I don't even think is fully a, a, our guy. Yeah. So I just thought that was funny that two sides had a little slip up. Everybody slips up every once in a while. No, I mean, it's just no big deal. We cancel them out. We need to have grace, you know? That's yeah. not that's not like dumping 20,000 Haitians into small town America. That's just a slip of the tongue. Yeah. You know, one is actually an action. The other is just a little accident. Exactly. Well, I got a new shirt. Okay. Uh, can you read what it says? Absolutely not. <laughs> I got a new shirt I can't really wear, yeah. um, but it's exciting to add it to the wardrobe, similar to the George Floyd hat I have. Yeah, you have a lot of this type of shit that you can't wear and you never wear, and I'm beginning to think why. why but then is, I accidentally the will wear it. Maybe I'll wear it in the house only, and then I take like the trash out or something, and then it puts me into a precarious situation. And potentially. it's high alert time. Yeah, yeah it's pretty exciting. All right, moving on. Next is the uh, King's Bread tweet. I yeah. thought this was really funny. This guy said, started calling the middle of a loaf of bread the King's Bread and saying things like, a cheddar this fine demand the, <laughs> demands the King's Bread. This is just one of the many ways I have scraped joy out of a cold and unaccountable universe. That's fun. I agree with that last sentence there. You got to get joy where you can. You got to have your own ways to have fun. And whether it's stupid to other people, as long as it's entertaining to you, you got to have your fun. You got to get yours. Everyone's going to try to suck the joy out of you, ruin your life, all that type of shit. Drop 20,000 Haitians. But you got to have fun with your little king's bread bit. Yeah. You can make a joke about the poison you're eating. Yep. The glyphosate shit. We'll get to that. All right. Next is the U.S. Capitol building. This is going to blow your mind. Everyone thinks, oh, all these big monuments and buildings, we built them ourselves like 200 years ago or something. Look at this. It goes under. Holy shit. This is mud flood shit. That's, That's how it used to be. Oh, my God. I had no, well, I knew, but did you have any idea it was like that? No, and I, I'm going gonna, gonna to say you're retarded. <laughs> no. So we... you do something like this, and then the next point you're going to make, now nobody believes you. That's you're you're like doing a crying wolf thing. Mm. New moon, you know, the the new moon thing. You go, I don't know how stuff goes into space. Now listen to me on politics. And then I go, hmm, you discredited yourself with half research shit. And, but maybe uh, that adds to the satire aspect of the episode. So when the bad guys and the fact checkers and Google tries to get us. They'll go, well, they said this about the blacks and the Jews, but they said this about space travel and the mud flood. Uh, maybe we chalk it all up to satire. Leave the channel up. Yeah. <laughs> sure. All maybe, right. Yeah. 40 chess. All right. Yeah. 40 chess is right. All right. Next thing. Uh, Brianna Taylor. Yeah, say her name. It's been a while since we said her name. Brianna Taylor. I just wanted to get Brianna Taylor back on the record. Said her name. Got it. It's very important. All right. Uh, Mr. Beast's new food. Slap. Just, just dropped. <laughs> yeah. Um, and can you read the headline? Mr. Beast, KSI, and Logan Paul are releasing Lunchly, a Lunchables competitor. Uh, Mr. Beast has candy. Logan Paul and KSI have uh, their drink. And so they said, why don't we put those together and then compete with Lunchables? And it's it's just an exact Lunchables duplicate, and they are coming for Lunchables, right? Yep, coming for Lunchables. And as you could probably guess, it's full of seed oils and processed crap and Lots of natural flavors, which is another thing that's actually toxic, but it sounds right. Like, oh, natural flavors, but it's actually full of non-natural things that are very toxic. Kind of like how Planned Parenthood isn't really planning any parenthoods. Yeah, it's kid slop. It's and kid slop, yeah. It's fascinating to me because, like, uh, that's what Lunchables is, too. Lunchables mm -hmm. is kid slop. And... Um, but it's interesting that when Mr. Beast and these guys, they kind of faced some backlash, like, oh, dude, they all have content that's kind of catered to kids in a way. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, you want to just add more kid slop. You didn't take the high road or do anything good. And uh, they're like, yeah, but that's slop too. But then they're actually like individuals and creators, you know, when Kellogg's or General Mills or whoever makes Lunchables – makes kid slop, it's like, that's for the investors. We're a faceless corporation. No no one specifically did it. Yeah, it's just kind of a... It's business, baby. It's a confluence of factors that made the kid slop. But now Mr. Beast and these guys do it, and it's like, hey, that guy's making kid slop. Yeah, that's so a good it's, point. It's interesting. And it kind of doesn't have any standards. You'd think, you know, his audience is kids. Yeah. So what is he 
provided them content wise. He had the trans person. Yeah. And he said, anyone who goes against Ava has a problem with me. And then how'd that work out? Yeah. Ava's allegedly a sex criminal now. Um, and now he's feeding poison to the kids for lunch and you should have some standards. And it's like a, it becomes a money grab thing. I Unfortunately, mean, and it's Mr. Beast, probably not his real last name. I don't know what his real last name is, but it's not Mr. Beast. That's for sure. It's Donaldson. Mm. He's, I guess, a Scandinavian. Oh, it probably got changed. <laughs> <laughs> Some used to be something else. Um, no, yeah. but anyway, like, he, he, it really is just a money grab. So, like, if you're, oh, Mr. Beast is good and he's in philanthropy and does this, it's like, yeah, he's in the money grab game too, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody knows that. Can you quickly read some of the ingredients um, from the, what comes in the Lunchly? Uh, what do you want me to read? The pizza crust? Yeah, read the pizza Enriched crust. Enriched bleached wheat flour, flour niacin, reduced iron, thea, uh, theamine, mononitrate, riboflavin, folic acid, water, vegetable shortening, soybean oil, hydrogenated soybean oil, sugar, salt, yeast, vegetable gums. Nothing good. All that slop, yeah. All fake stuff. And it's like if you buy it on the shelf and you're getting like a pepperoni pizza that's not refrigerated, it's just like what, on the shelf? Is that how they sell I, it? I think it's refrigerated. Oh, they, maybe. they refrigerate that. Something to keep an eye out. Um, and we have one more food warning here. I saw this clip. I thought it would be worth sharing. It's very good info. This is real. This is not schizophrenic. When you add pasta water to your sauces and recipes, you're unknowingly consuming concentrated residues of glyphosate. Boiling grains releases pesticides and herbicides like glyphosate into the water. A Canadian study conducted last September found that 73% of glyphosate in grains transferred from pasta to cooking water. Adding pasta water to sauce may help improve the texture, but it could have deleterious effects on your health. This is Yeah, that makes sense. Glyphosate's super bad. Boomers love glyphosate, which is Roundup. Mm. Boomers love Roundup. So got to watch out for that. All right. And our last part of this final page of housekeeping, I may have told people this before. Maybe we said it in bonus land. Uh, it's a little bit of a red pill. Uh, Will Ferrell isn't funny and he never was. <laughs> Something I've realized. This I, was this was brought on by watching his trans show, right? Like we saw his trans show on Netflix where he went cross country with his buddy who went trans at age 60 or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I kind of, you know, a lot of people like Will Ferrell. So you're going to upset some people with that. But hey, guys, think about it. You know, the lines. Th th there's a lot of things. The writing, the costume design. The, uh, the editing. Yeah, the editing. There's a lot of stuff that goes into surrounding Will Ferrell making him funny. So I can believe it. Will Ferrell, never really that funny. Yeah, that's where I'm at. And then once someone gets like political and like does the trans shit, you kind of like, ugh. And then you look back and you go, wait, why did I ever think this was funny? Same thing happened with Billy Eichner. Man, mm. he used to do the man on the street. He used to think those were so funny. And now he's like a Democrat uh, Efsler. Mm. And, and now I watch him and I go, oh, this guy is just like an obnoxious, gay, annoying guy. Yeah, that, that's a lot of people. You get turned off by one thing and then uh, it's never the same, right? And yeah. that's, uh, that's kind of like girls getting the ick. Yeah. Their husband gives them the ick and then they're never respected again. Exactly. That's where I'm at. I got the ick from Will Ferrell. Okay, that's fair. All right, we're out of housekeeping and moving on to cringe of the week. <laughs> Uh, first things first, first story of the day in Cringe, there was a hate crime that just happened, and we actually have a clip of it. And this is being investigated. The reason we say hate crime is people, the police are investigating this as a potential hate crime. So that's why we say it. In America, you need to learn it. Learn English. Learn it. You get money in America? This isn't you get money in America. Learn English. I don't give a fuck. Learn it. Learn it. You riding on the roads, learn English. Learn English. Learn English. Learn English. This ain't your fucking country. This ain't your fucking country. Learn English. Learn English. This ain't your fucking country. All right. It goes on like that for a little while longer. And he just yells at him a couple times, right? And then the business was removed from Uber Eats. Mm hmm. They're reaching out to the delivery person, uh, making sure he's okay. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, maybe this is a little harsh. Maybe he was yelling in the guy's face, which, you know, isn't the best look. But I'd call it rude. Yeah, rude. But was it a hate crime? Like, what's the crime? The, the, the driver has hurt feelings. It looks like freedom of speech. Yeah, it kind of looks like a rude guy who got in his face a little bit and was frustrated. Like, hate crime to me is like, I'm stomping you, I'm beating you up, or I'm hitting you, or I'm trying to kill you. 
because you are this mm -hmm. right now, because you're gay or black or this. This guy's like frustrated. He doesn't know English. Yeah. So he could have been any race who didn't speak English trying to use an app in English to pick up food. Big time. So uh, it's hate crime without the crime. And I, a little bit of hate, I guess, is it? It's arguable. It's arguable. And yeah. then uh, we're noticing this too. The black community is getting frustrated with all the illegals because mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times those two groups interact in work environments and stuff like that. They're stuffed into their neighborhoods in Chicago, for example. Yep. And they take resources that they're competing for. Um, but they, black people don't have the white guilt that white people have. Yeah. So it's like you'll see more things like this from non-whites, which they, is uh, interesting. They also, if you've if you've ever seen an Urban Decay, they also tend to have a shorter fuse. <laughs> so <laughs> that's very true. Something to watch. Boiling point coming soon, right? Yeah. But yeah, the media swarms in. Are you okay? Do you need to talk to someone? We'll we'll bring in a Spanish speaking therapist for you. Like all that uh, childish shit, just because some guy kind of yelled. Yep. It takes us to our next story. Hate crime is going to be devalued too. Yeah. That's going to be severely devalued. Oh, they drove the scooter on the pride sidewalk. Hate crime. He yelled at a guy who couldn't speak English because he couldn't communicate with him at all while at work, working for a restaurant. Hate crime. Soon it's going to be nothing, right? Yeah. And we get to, we'll get to one in urban too, where like a Hispanic person knocks out an old lady. A Hispanic person knocks out an old white lady. Mm -hmm. Not a hate crime. Yeah. That was nothing. That was misdemeanor. All right, we'll get to that. Next is a ad we saw, I believe, on Instagram. Can you read what it says? Yeah, this is from New Zealand. It says, don't let MPOX scars ruin your nudes. And it's a, the, the ad has a picture of a gay man taking a picture of his cack. Mm. So what they're basically saying with this is get your monkeypox vaccine so you can continue to fuck and suck gay guys without getting monkeypox and then monkeypox scars so you'll be more comfortable sending pictures of your cack to other homosexuals. Yeah, you can't let anything interrupt your super degenerate hypersexual behavior with other men. Yeah, this so, is like end times shit. I know, so that's why you need the monkeypox shit. And they Crazy. say they say we're on the wrong side of history, mm. but that this is who's on the right side of history and what's prioritized when you're on the right side of history. Yep. Very strange. Yeah. Brought to you by Big Pharma, you know, like whatever, <laughs> or some foundation, some gay foundation, right? Exactly. All right. Next, uh, there's a new Marvel movie, and here's how they're describing it. That Agatha is the gayest project Marvel has ever done. Agree? I would agree with that, yeah. Why is it? You'll see. You'll yeah. see when you watch it. But, you know, I think witches are queer inherently just because we are outcast and, like, set aside for many reasons. And I think this show shows a really good representation of different types of people and that we can all use the power we have in it within to, like, go forth and, and be great. Yeah. Well, to be fair, I thought all Marvel movies were gay. Me too. I was going to say, so if it's the gayest, yeah, it must be really, really, really bad, right? Yeah, and we actually- like full penetration. <laughs> they're showing it all. Yeah, they're showing bad stuff. Um, and then we also have got a picture of the boardroom where they figured out uh, this idea to make a gay Marvel movie. There they are lighting all the money on fire with yeah. all the women, yep. the multiracial women group lighting the money on fire. Yep. Not a single white man in the boardroom, though. Yep. Money still goes on fire, but the white man didn't make any decisions. So obviously this isn't going to make a lot of money. It's going to be one of those flop movies. Mm -hmm. and I think it's a series, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah. so it's a series. We don't even care, you know? I know, I'm not, um, but I'm they're not, not following <laughs> up on this. After we roast this in Cringe of the Week, I'm not following up. Uh, me neither. Um, so they're not going to make much money from this. So making money isn't the goal. So what is the goal? Who's the audience? It's adult children and children children. Yeah. And if they're not trying to make money, they're trying to teach lessons. And then if you're trying to teach kids what from this, it tells me they're trying to teach them that like being gay or being queer is cool and it's better than being like a we uh, a normal white normal person, <laughs> yeah. you know? It's better than being like a mean normal person. Being gay and queer is cool and it's an outlier thing and they're also um humanizing and favoring the villain in this case too, like a witch 
witches are queer and all that stuff. And then you're kind of like making the villain the good guy. Yeah. It's very I, confusing. I really don't understand. But of course, a shaved headed black woman will wor word salad you at the Marvel premiere. Right. And the gay guy will go. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, queen. And then, <laughs> and then he's getting the monkey box vaccine later. All right. Let's get to the next clip. And speaking of queer, we have some uh, LGBTs who got a home together and look, and look at how they handle it. Day one of being a homeowner. <laughs> we did all the paperwork later in the day, so we didn't do much other than just doing a punch list to all the things we want to do. Uh, <laughs> I'm too short. <laughs> well, I was inside. Zizi was outside taking care of some of our plants. We got a bonus little mini watering can. <laughs> I did go on top of the roof to make sure we didn't have any media problems. And besides missing just a few shingles, the roof does actually look pretty good for being a 20 plus year old roof. Also, this is my HVAC, always known as my problem. <laughs> Here's my new tool shop. Look at this. I got an old vice. I got an old work table. I'm in love. Yeah, so that's totally normal. You know, you get a new house and the uh, husband is tending to the garden. Yeah. And then the girl is up on the roof and excited about the work table and having a vice. Yeah, that's, the, the, that's normal. The wife always gets right on the roof, checks the roof, uh, and the man's just the gardening. And you know what? Congratulations to these two. Husband and wife bought a house. Big the new American dream. Big moment in their life, but it's just a little bit backwards. Yeah. They got one thing really crossed wrong. And uh, it's very funny, though, because they they go back to their, their gender roles, right? The guy is like, oh, let me, I'm tapping on this. I got the workbench. And, you know, you have to call him Samantha, but he's doing all the same shit. Yeah. And then the girl who's got a little, be a little mustache while she gardens and, like, tends to the children, you know? Mm-hmm. The, little backers. They can't break their nature is is the broader point, right? That's a good point. And then also the 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 wife, the woman, uh I laughing. can't tell who you're talking about. <laughs> the purple hair person laughing, going yeah. ah! and like going through the house. That's yeah. like a scary movie. You're hiding in the closet and they're coming to get you, and yeah. then it's like, ah, here I come. That's split. That's M night Shyamalan <laughs> you're shit. Just like, oh no. All right, our last clip of cringe of the week. Rory McElroy. Yeah. The golfer. Yeah. Here he is. Uh Throwing a baseball. There he goes. He's getting some le he's getting oh. some lessons. Looks like he's going to be throwing out the first pitch of the game. Mm. Oh, no. That's not good. And what was the first hint? The pants. Yeah. And the second hint was Rory's a girl's name. Oh, Rory from Gilmore Girls or something, right? Is yeah. that one of them? There's a girl in my middle school named Rory. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, but here's the question. Rory, obviously, humiliating experience. He shouldn't be throwing out the first pitch. He he has, like, PR people, an agent, everybody. They should all – they're probably women, I guess. But every single one of them should be, Rory, don't. Do not accept. Just go to the game. Do not accept to throw the first pitch. Throw the first pitch? Uh, we'll just see what it looks like. Yeah. I think we have something scheduled for you for that weekend. Yeah, you can't be in Baltimore or wherever it is. <laughs> yeah. um, and so the next question that I have to ask you, Fleckus, is – would you trade yourself with Rory's skill set? So you would be as good at Rory at golf, like one of the top five, top two, whatever golfers in the world, but you'd throw like this. Would you trade? No. That's, see, that's I crazy. Wouldn't. I like whatever. I like the skills and the talents God gave me. I don't want to trade with anybody. I want to teach my kid to throw a baseball and a football and catch and I can't do that with that. I might get a few years of playing golf good. Yeah, you get, go to an amateur qualifier, and then you'd be on the tour. You'd, he, Rory earned $38 million in 2024. You know, that's great. So you're turning that down because you don't want to. That that's down. how much you don't want to throw like a pussy. <laughs> that's that's how much I don't want to throw like a pussy. All right. So I'm turning that down and I'm just I'm happy with my skill set. All right. You're a man of principles. Yeah. All right. Let's get into urban decay. Uh, first clip is a fight at Chipotle. And before we play this, I want you guys to know this was posted to someone's story. So that's like top tier gem content. Story posts only last 24 hours, and it's just posted randomly, but we got it. Ooh. 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 Ooh, shit.
Wow. Kool-Aid man type behavior. Yeah. Straight uh, running through the A-gap. Yeah. The <laughs> Chipotle then, lane. There's only a lane and there's like hot grills on either side. That's a high risk, dangerous scenario. Yeah. And things really escalated. The woman had food thrown at her by the worker and yeah. then she returned fire by throwing, I believe, her iPad at her. Yes. Which is, you kind of, you, you lost your cool. You threw your your $700 iPad at somebody. And then she picked it up and smashed it. Which is the right move. Which is the right move. And then got Kool-Aid manned into the wall. Yeah. So uh, everyone's a loser here, though. Because I think the worker threw something first. Yeah. Which is crazy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're worried about Chipotle. We've been worried about Chipotle for a long time. We've showed people grabbing all the napkins and the forks. I know Chipotle hate to see me coming. Uh, they're getting dirtier. They're, you know, you can make the seed oil argument and all that too, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it's getting ugly at Chipotle. People are getting mad. The lines are long. Yep. The employees aren't really well trained. It's not what it used to be, right? And you know how certain groups took over Spirit Airlines? Yeah. And their Spirit Airlines behavior, and then mm -hmm. the standards went down, and like the flying is not great because certain people behave certain ways at Spirit Airlines. Yeah. Same thing, I believe, like you said, is happening at Chipotle. Um, location dependent, for sure. Yeah, the you Midtown know. Manhattan location. Uh, yeah, it's going to be all finance people and normal with the lunch line. Yeah. But in bad area, Chipotle's, that's where a lot of shit can pop off. Yeah. Um, and which leads us to our next point. Looks like here, Chipotle is trying something new. They have an automated AI robot worker that prepares the food now. Yeah. So you got the robot, it drops the bowl, fills it with the stuff. Automatic proportions, all that. Yeah. So I get it. I get I understand it too, you know? You know fighting like that. You're, You're gonna just, save a lot of money yeah, by you doing it this way. Pick up your pig slop through a window. And then uh if this doesn't work, I think Chipotle's next move would be just hiring Hispanics, uh, based on this next guy's testimony. So for years, this Check it out. Popeye location uh, had all black employees. You come here, you know, the order was going to be fucked up. The attitude at the little drive through was going to be shitty. You knew all this stuff when you came here, so you had to come and you had to prepare yourself. <laughs> well, one day I came in here and all the black, my complexion people was gone. And it was replaced by all Spanish people. Now, usually I say, oh, my people losing their job. But in this instance, right? They replaced all the black employees at this location with Spanish employees. And now it's some of the best customer service I've ever received. I said, do you have any black attendants? She said, no, but I will make some. You know what them black employees used to tell us when we would come in here and say, hey, you out of this? Well, that's it for today. <laughs> that's good to know. I think the Hispanics, um, they, they follow the rules. Yeah. Um, there's like standards and rules that they have. And I think the Hispanics would be like scared if like a health inspector came in and got them in trouble. So the rules are very important. And then other groups might look at the rules like, ah, uh, the corny manager makes us do that, but he ain't here. So I'm not, I'm going to mop tomorrow instead yeah. of tonight. <laughs> yeah. That's what Lionel <laughs> wants us to do. It's like some stupid name and they think they could bully him. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I, you can't argue with results is my main takeaway there. I, I don't know who, you know, could have been Indians, could have been replaced with whites, could have been replaced with Mexicans. The guy says Spanish and it's like, I don't think they're from Spain, my buddy. Um, but the point is you can't argue with the results like notable improvement like that. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. The that's... guy, you, the guy stops saying that take my jobs when Popeye's gives him better service. Exactly. Can't argue with results. Can't argue with the results. Doesn't mean we want all illegals coming here. Yeah. All right. Next is the guy who's excited about food stamps. They're doing like a, they're doing a bit here. Um, and it says what POV when you remember your food stamps just kicked in. So it's the guy going up to his wife, like, can we get this? The and lamb chops. No. Yeah. And, you know, being on food stamps used to be like a shameful thing. Of course. And you tried to get off of it and you didn't want to be on it for long. And if you're down in your luck, you're on some food stamps and then you get off and you feel way better. Um, but now it's kind of different. Like that's an able bodied dad. He's dancing around. That's He's a going crazy <laughs> dancing around. <laughs> yeah. And that's like a normal woman who could be working too. It's kind of like some Willy Wonka shit. You yeah. know how Charlie's uh, grandpa was like sleeping in the bed all the time and then they got the golden ticket and he starts jumping around? Yeah. Some real Willy Wonka shit right yeah, here. Yeah, he's limping on the work site, but he's dancing at the food stamp location. And uh, yeah, the guy, these crazy dance moves, we'll play it again. Look at that. 
He's moving. You're telling me he can't rip a shovel at 6 a.m. on the construction site? Mm, he needs 1200 a month. Yeah. For what? I know. So uh, able-bodied family clearly together, and this shit pisses me off. Me too. This shit really pisses me off. And then next, we have an, another example of food stamps, but these are for the illegals in Springfield. And we have some people who worked at the grocery store who knew the extent of the food stamps that were given to the Haitians. I can tell you personally that when I worked at the grocery store and I cashed them out, the receipts were alarming. $13,000 on EBT food, not including the $29,000 that was on EBT cash. It's infuriating. Yes, sir. We're, so they're not getting 600 to And while they're dressed very well, very well. Uh, how are you able to dress like that? Coming hmm. Those are insane numbers. Yeah, really. I don't think anyone knew that it was like that. They might be thinking, oh, a couple hundred bucks, 600, 500 bucks a month, 13,000, 20,000 cash. And that's like built up or I don't know how they get it or whatever. Family but, size, yeah. number of people, but still cash too. It shouldn't be going down like that. Really, for really who? bad. For all these random people we don't really need. And uh, there, there's this thing where people kind of make you feel guilty for saying we need welfare reform or something like that, where they're like, well, uh, like it's a it's a really, well, th businesses get tax cuts or something. And clearly there's something very, very broken with our welfare system if the guy's at Costco doing the full craziest dance move you've ever seen while he's able-bodied with his wife. Like that's what... Like a child could be doing that, maybe mm. at the best. That guy crab legs. Go get two jobs, motherfucker. Like this is over. The free ride is over. Uh, clearly, something needs to be done, and uh, and then if something doesn't need to be done, then we need to stop letting people in who use it. You know, there's something. There's a very weird, uh, visceral reaction to someone who comes into the country and starts hammering freebies. Mm. Like that's not for you at all. Mm -hmm. um, but nobody seems to contest it, right? And then eventually they'll go, oh, you want that to continue? you got to vote for us. You can vote now, yeah. and then we'll never win an election again. Yep. All right, let's go to the next clip. We kind of referenced this earlier in the show. This old woman walking her dog was attacked uh, right near a migrant shelter, is what they said. Let's let it play. Surveillance footage obtained exclusively by Fox 5. You see her stop as her dog sniffs a wall. A man dressed in black walks past her. Her back is to him. He turns around heads towards her, punches her so hard she's knocked off her feet. We intentionally pause the video before the punch lands. When you knock me, I hit my nose here and then I fell down. In the video, you can see her attacker calmly walking off. Her dog tries to comfort her. Passersby rush to help her. She's laying still on the sidewalk. You don't look like you were gonna get up when I saw that video. But here you are. I didn't want to see the tape. And maybe because I feel so lucky, because he could have had a knife, right? Mm. So let's go over the aspects of what exactly happened here. It was a random, unprovoked attack. Uh, the victim was an elderly woman. It occurred in broad daylight. And it was an interracial attack. Yeah. So those are like four, maybe three, if the interracial doesn't matter to you. Uh, aggravating factors for this assault, right? And it ended up being a misdemeanor assault, which is weird because if you ask me, that should be a death penalty type crime. Random, broad daylight, elderly victim, like could have been a murder to me. So I agree with you, death penalty. They say misdemeanor assault. So now we're negotiating and let's meet somewhere in the middle, right? Yeah, at somewhere least attempted murder. At least 10 years in jail, right? For that type of thing. But we probably, because it's a misdemeanor assault, we probably have to let him go because George Floyd. Yeah, because George Floyd, remember that? Mm. So we have to let this guy go now. Um, and we don't know if it was a migrant or not, but it was near a migrant shelter. And, you know, who would do such a thing, right? Mm. I don't know. A guy, a 10th generation American who's lived on the Upper West Side for the, is this whole time. I actually don't know where this is, but. No, it's in Manhattan. And this makes me think that like the sensitivity around racial slurs mm. actually had like a bigger impact than just like making people's feelings hurt less. Um, because back in the day, racial slurs were used by people to point out the bad people of certain groups. And everyone was able to like judge reality based on that. 
But now, like, oh, no one can say the N word, so we're letting the criminals out and crime is up. And then no one can say the F slur, so now the gays are like teaching the kids all the trans shit. And then you can't say whatever people say about Hispanics because that's so mean, but now we have like millions of people here illegally. I think that might have all been a psyop uh, so they can kind of usher in what they wanted to usher in. And in, to be fair, too, like this is this is Fox, so it's a little different. Great point <laughs> <laughs> on the racial slur thing there. Great work, buddy. Um, but also this uh, this whole thing, they won't even show the video, you know, and I get it. It's Fox News or whatever. It was probably very violent. But like that's the type of reality based thing that people need to see. This guy full out sucker punches, crow hops into a punch, an elderly woman. And it's like, you kind of need to see that to have the hateful reaction to that, to demand strong arm policing and strong arm like retaliation to this basically, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm, so they, they take that away, can't say the word anymore. All of a sudden society gets weak, right? <laughs> exactly. Something's broken. Well, don't get too down or too depressed. We're moving on to uplifting gold. It's gonna get all better right now. Um, this guy took a cool video in a bear's cave. Look what happened. Wow. He squeaks by. Hmm. Crazy. Yeah. Uh, rule of thumb, don't go into any little caves like that. They can be mountain lion pits, too. Mm -hmm. If you're in a mountain lion panther type area, Florida Panthers. Good point. So don't be going into any holes, crevasses, shit like that. Bears and dogs, same parent company or no? Mammals. They're mammals. They're four-legged. Because Jerry's got that coloring with the dots and like the similar. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not cats. They're not cats. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I'm right. They're close. All right, let's go to the guy doing the mannequin bit. This guy is a real-life mannequin because he can hold his body so still that he looks like a wax figure. But this is an incredibly difficult skill because it involves maintaining complete stillness, even when falling or being submerged in water for a long time. While underwater, he still doesn't move a muscle, making it seem like he's lifeless. Pretty good. Yeah, good skill. I don't know what you're going to do with it, but good luck to you, brother. He can get a lot of clips for doing that. Yeah, sure. All right, next, we got to go kind of fast because we're running out of time. Uh, they're perp walking kids now. Whenever kids do, like, make a kill list or, like, threaten the school or kind of being sketchy, um, now they're perp walking them with the police to teach them a lesson. In Florida only, In right? In Florida, yeah. All right, sir, careful as you can. You're going to be walking over here to this, the gate over here, all right? Slow and steady. What you here for today? Put that foot down. Let me get the other foot. All right. Come on in here. Have a seat in the cell. We're going to gather up some paperwork and get things started for you. Do you have any questions? Yes, sir. All right. <laughs> Just good. Scared the fuck out of these kids. Good. I, I mean, that's a long-standing thing, right? Beyond scared straight. Like, what if these kids don't have dads or anybody who disciplines them? Um, it's time to start kind of threatening. There's this coddled child behavior thing where nobody ever really gets in trouble, right? Remember that, uh, like, 17-year-old who beat up that school social worker yeah. on camera? It's like people were arguing for him to be let free. That was like Michael Orr on the blind side turning on Sandra Bullock and just pounding her face in. Yeah, big time. Like, we we, we need some overreaction to, to society's underreaction, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, next is I'm all a, for the perp walk. Yeah, Let's me too. Teach him a lesson, right? And that, that kid one, learned a lesson. He and, was scared. Yeah, absolutely. They, they have his feet chained up, and he's like, oh, shit. If this yeah. was a bit, they, they wouldn't do all this. <laughs> uh, next is a guy thing that the guys will like, kicking a big rock down a mountain. All right, let's see if we've got it. Oh, we've got this, boys. We've got this, boys. We've got this, boys. Oh! 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 This thing is huge, cuz. Where is he? I've lost it. Oh, he's gone. He's gone left. Has it? 
Oh, is that it? Oh, we're back. Shit, we're back. Holy shit. Oh! Shit! Look at that thing move. Feels good. That would kill someone, yeah. That's scary. That'll blow through a house. Mm -hmm. uh, next, the Waffle House CEO died uh, this last week. And then uh, an offensive lineman for this t football team running out carried the Waffle House flag. And I'm assuming these guys probably like eat at Waffle House or like that's their go-to spot uh, for like the team meals or whenever it's late at night or something after a game. Yeah. Good to see. Nice respect. Yep. Um, that guy was like a five-star recruit too. He's yeah. He's like 6'6". Six, six. Number one offensive lineman in the country. So you're allowed to do that. That's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Well, that was the last uh, clip of Uplifting. And we have some shout outs here. We have a very special shout out. A happy 13th birthday today to Evelyn, September 20th, turns 13. I believe she's in seventh grade. And she had a report. She had to do like a project about principled people that she looks up to or whatever. And they picked me. Wow. They picked me as the principled person. Very nice. Very principled. Nice Very job. principled. Thank you, Evelyn. We love you. Happy and birthday. your family. You have a great dad, Ross, who told me about this. Uh, really appreciate it. We sent you a bunch of shirts. A bunch of shirts coming for your family. Um, wear it with good health. There you go. You know? Thank you for featuring me. We really appreciate it. You're a lovely kid. All right. Uh, and we have one more happy birthday to Sam Mateo on uh, September 17th this week. What was the name? Sam Mateo. Wow. That sounds like San Mateo, the city. Yeah. Well, You're close. Sam. Maybe he did a bit on his Instagram, but uh, he probably doesn't know. We're shouting him out. We're shouting him out. Okay. And then is there one last one? There is. There's a, a shout out for my son, uh, 922 birthday. He will be three. Wow. I don't think he understands. Well, I guess he does. Happy birthday, Caleb Joshua. Happy birthday, Caleb. And we've shouted out another member of this family, He's, I believe. Yeah, we shouted out Caleb the baby before, and they were so happy. So now it's Caleb the toddler. I yeah. Think. Happy birthday, You're Caleb. coming along nicely, Caleb. Yeah, you're developing. You're three. Congrats. Very nice. Well, another Fuck Us Talks in the books. If you guys, uh, we have one more thing. Oh, God. Gabe of Gabe's Puppets, he made us a picture, which he's sending to me in the mail. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That looks very cool. That looks exactly like us. That's the image of us featuring him on the show. Yeah. He did me a little dirty. I'm a little wide there. A little boxy. Hey. But thank you, Gabe. That's what you look like. <laughs> the picture adds 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Can't all right. It's 40, 50 pounds. <laughs> Another Fluckus Talks in the books. Thank you guys for watching. Like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Fluckustalks.com for a bonus land dropping right now. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about the P. Diddy stuff. That's going to be great. And we have a lot of other good clips, too. It didn't make it into the show. You guys are going to love it. If you're still watching now, extra 30 minutes. Have a good weekend. We'll see you on Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> I'm too short. <laughs> <laughs>